Hi there, this is Irate Spartan 13, and we're doing my return to Cowpens battlefield. And we're going to rewalk the battlefield of Cowpens during the conditions of the battle um, here at Cowpens National Battlefield. It's a great park, beautiful day. It's December 15th, and I'm walking the battlefield from the British perspective, which I do, I've done before, but this time we're going to walk it at, during the conditions of the actual battle. And the British forces had. Um, uh, several different units here at Cowpens. Um, the Legion Cavalry, which they had 200 of those um, guys there. And they end up really not engaging in the battle. There were Dragoons that were engaged, um, about 50 of them, and those guys were um, rebuffed. You have uh, 16th Light Infantry. Light Infantry is your bread and butter infantry that's going to fight. You have two um, Grasshopper, three pounder artillery pieces, and the Royal Artillery here. Um, and you've got the seventh Fusiliers engaged here at um, Cowpens, as well, and the elite um, killing force, the um, the seventy first Highlanders, and those are Fraser's Highlanders, um, led by um, Arthur MacArthur. Uh, British deployment: as the British come up, they've been up for forty eight hours. Um, out of forty eight hours, they've had about four hours of sleep. They haven't ate anything, had anything to eat, and. As we'll just kind of go the uh, do the battle from the British perspective and see what they see and see things through Tarleton's eyes. So Tarleton and his troops come up to this point here, and what they see in front of them and what they find is they're getting shot at from militia forces in their direct front. Tarleton deploys his cavalry. He sends 50 cavalry forward to brush off this militia. His impression is that this militia, these sharpshooters here, are a delaying force and that the Continental and um, Patriot forces are going to withdraw down um, the Green River Road here. Um, he doesn't think that they're here to fight, uh, I don't think, at that point. So he sends his cavalry to brush these guys off. And when they go forward, they lose 15 out of their 50 men. They, they empty about 15 saddles. Some say up to half. Um, and that's when t um, Tarleton realizes he's in a fight, and he deploys his, um, his whole force. And so he's going to deploy his, his infantry forces here. And their job, they're going to drive these sharpshooters back. Behind his the fusiliers and the and the um, the other infantry is going to be his elite striking infantry, which is the 71st Highlanders under Arthur MacArthur. This is his infantry, um, his infantry trump card. These are elite troops, and they're going to come at you with bayonet. Um, and they're gonna they're gonna be intimidating because they're they're Scotsmen coming at you and they're Highlanders. The third line he's gonna hold in reserve his 200 Legion cavalry. These guys end up not engaging in the fight. So from Tarleton's perspective, he's he's thinking I've got to brush these guys off. What he doesn't realize is behind this line is there's another line, and this is about um, somewhere between 900 and 1300 militia under Andrew Pickens. And these guys have been given an order to fire two shots and withdraw. These guys have been given an order to fire two shots and withdraw to the left of this third line here, which the third line consists of Continental, um, Maryland, and Delaware infantry. And these guys are the bread and butter. These guys have been trained by von Steuben, Baron von Steuben in, in infantry drill. They know how to use a bayonet, and they're feeling stubborn this day. They're all feeling stubborn this day. Um, these guys are tired. They've been marching for two days. They haven't had anything to eat. And they've had four hours of sleep. These guys have been overnight in the battlefield getting ready for the battle. Their commander, Daniel Morgan, is a um, continental um, officer. He's been an officer of militia. He's seasoned. He's a veteran of the French and Indian Wars. And even more importantly, he's got a grudge match with the British. He was whipped 400 and he was given 500 lashes by um, the British for insubordination when he was um, in the British Army, and um, which is basically a death sentence. Morgan jokingly claims that he was only given 499 lashes, so you know he owes them a whipping, um, and he's planned um, to give them a whipping here today. Uh, the militia commander is a guy by the name of Pickens. Pickens is a, a militia leader who actually was on parole from the British, and he's violating his parole um, to be here because he was upset that the British had messed with his, uh, his family property um, and destroyed his property. So he considered his parole over, and he is a local that knows a lot of people, and he is the one that sends word out that there's going to be a fight here. And 
So the Continental and militia forces here are going to grow from about 1,000 men to almost 2,000 very quickly as locals come pouring in here with uh, um, musket in hand to, um, to give the British a welcome. So I'm Tarleton and I'm deploying, I'm here and I start losing men. And what's really important is I start losing officers. So what am I going to do? I'm going to deploy my infantry. Well, first I'm going to brush that the sharpshooters off because I think it's just a delaying force, which he does. Tarleton is an aggressive commander. He's been an aggressive commander throughout the entire Revolutionary War. He's the guy at Waxhaws who said, um, you know, we're not going to take prisoners. They gave him Tarleton's quarter and killed a lot of a lot of militia. And these locals know this. And they're not expecting a whole lot of mercy from the British coming down this road. And they're not expecting to give a whole lot of mercy to the British coming down this road. So these sharpshooters that are up on that slope up there, they're behind those trees, and they're popping at um, our troops right now. They're not picking out infantry uh, troops. They're picking out officers. They're picking out anybody that's got an epaulette on their shoulder, and they're dropping them. And they've been told to do this. And they're, they, they, uh, they do their job. Um, it's estimated that as many as two-thirds of the of the British officers get picked off. And so you've got really well-trained British troops, disciplined British troops, led by well-trained officers and disciplined officers, and you start to see the officer corps get shot away. Um, so the British deploy in line here, um, not great ground to deploy in line, but I'm sure at the time of the battle it was a little bit different. They deploy in line here and they, they move forward to, to brush off these militia, these sharpshooters. So they start marching down this road here, and um, probably at a brisk pace. And the militia planks at them, and suddenly they're marching forward. They deploy their grasshopper, um, three-pounder artillery pieces. They start blasting away with those. Don't know how many shots they fired. Um, but they're marching forward in line here. The 71st Highlanders are going to be to my left over here and to the rear a little bit. This is the um, the infantry reserve that's going to come in at the decisive point and win the battle. And then back at the starting point where we just left all our packs so that we could march forward with our muskets and um, our ammo and engage the enemy, that's going to be where the uh, 200 American Legion, or excuse me, Tarleton Legion Cavalry are. And we're going to start marching forward here. By the way, this battlefield has been beautifully restored. Um, it used to be a road going through here, as I understand it. And um, it's just beautiful. Battlefield is gorgeous. So the British are marching in line, moving up. They hit this first line here. And as we're coming up here, I would imagine as they're marching up, maybe they fire a volley. I don't know. Um, and the, sure they did. And the sharpshooters suddenly disperse. And um, the British are probably given a little chase here, probably going at a br brisk pace. And, um, oh, one of the things about cow pens is, and, and, and my knowledge of it first, I'm not a historian, so um, understand, I'm just walking a battlefield, I'm a fan of military history, walking a battlefield, giving you the perspective of the troops who are fighting in the battle and hopefully giving you just a little bit of insight into what happened here at Cowpens, you know. Um, if I make historical inaccuracies or inaccuracies in particular terms or a name, um, I'm doing this on the fly, so <laughs> feel free to correct me. You're not gonna, uh, certainly there's a lot to learn. The one thing I've learned about the Cowpens National Battlefield is the more you know, the more there is to know about this battle. So we're coming up to the first line here. And Tarleton sees this, and I imagine they come up this first line here. And the militia sharpshooters have now, from the first line, have now withdrawn. And they probably get to right here. Or a little farther. Because we're coming to the first line. And this is the point they realize it's time to dress our lines and prepare ourselves because we see about anywhere between 900 and 1300 militia 
lined up in front of us. So we've come up this little rise and surprise, surprise, there's 1,300 guys off in the distance standing there waiting for you to come forward. So the British start moving forward, infantry in line, 71st Highlanders keeps their position back to our left behind us. And we're moving, we've got nice open ground to our right here and a little bit of rough to our left and we're now passing, you can see that sharpshooter there, the, sh the first line. So we haven't gone very far. Sharpshooters are now gone. Maybe they've hit a couple, maybe they haven't hit anybody, who knows. And here's the sharpshooter's view. When I see this, I think of those sharpshooters and they're standing here or they're behind these trees and they've been told they have so many people out in the country watching what the British are doing. And the British are doing the same thing. They're trying to get a feel for where Morgan is and they think he's here. And think about those militia guys standing right here, man. And they're, they're looking down that road and they see that red coming down the road. You know, and they're marching. They're marching, discipline marching. And they see him coming down the road and you're a guy standing here with a rifled musket and you see that guy, maybe he's riding a horse. Maybe he's, you know, maybe he's walking um, or maybe, or, and you take that first shot and that guy just falls out of his saddle or whatever happens. And then the British start deploying. Um, you know, maybe they see first before they see the main body, they see a line in front of the main body of light troops that are screening the main force. And they see them and they plink at a couple of them just to let them know they're, they're here. And that's when the British start to deploy and they deploy and then you start plinking off everybody that's got a fancy looking uniform on. And I think of this, this scene um, all those years ago and you can see it in your mind's eye if you really think about it. Especially if you're here on the battlefield, which is why I encourage you to, to walk this battlefield. Just a thought. Um, so this would be the skirmish line here, okay? Sharpshooters. These are guys that can hit things. You know, they're hunters. Guys that have been trained to shoot, hit things. So the British now know they're in a dogfight. They're looking ahead of them in this wooded area here. They've just come up. What is a slight rise? So I'm trying to move the camera slowly back here. And now they're looking at this and they see probably 12 to 1300 militia in front of them in a line in Pickens boys. And they get, um, they start marching towards them and they know they're going to, they're going to slug it out. These guys. Now, if you're a British soldier, you're still thinking we got these guys because it's militia. And if you're a Tarleton, you're wondering what's going on here because why is there militia? Why would they put militia to face you? Um, you're going to fight me with the main line of militia? I'm going to bring my regulars at you? Never. Uh, militia would never hold against regulars. So something's got to feel weird. But Tarleton does what Tarleton does, man. And he basically is going to come at him. That's what he does. So they blast forward at these guys straight at him. And they're coming forward. And some point, they get hammered, probably somewhere in this area here, by a volley. First volley, bam. Guys start dropping all around you. And um, you probably recoil a little bit, and you probably get some more guys in the line. You probably got the adrenaline going. That 48 hours, 40, uh, 44 out of 48 hours you've been awake probably is gone. You've probably got adrenaline going. And... <laughs> You're probably thinking to yourself, okay, let's get this over with. I'm tired. It's been a long, long two days. We got them. Let's, let's end this. Let's get this over with so I can get home and, um, and or get back to the main line and or get something to eat and or get a few hours rest. Let's get this over with. And that's kind of the attitude the British take here. So they advance. And remember, 71st Highlanders are still in the, in the rear back to my left. They're back there. And you come forward and the second volley hits and more men drop and you keep moving. And after that second volley, all of a sudden, that militia just starts withdrawing to the rear, just running. And most of them try to bunch up and head to the left, to your right, which is the continental left, because that's what they've been told to do by Morgan. And you've gotten here 
and you've finally reached the second line. Maybe you've gotten a volley or two off into them and you've killed a few of the militia and they're laying here. Someone's wounded, someone's hurt, it's better screaming. And um, this is the, um, I like this line here by Thomas Young and he says, at first it was pop, 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 um, the sound of the rifles and then the whole volley, it seemed like one sheet of flame from right to left. If you've ever seen reenactors, that's exactly what it does. And a reenactment, they, um, they're not as loud. A reenacting gun is not as loud as a, a rifle firing a, a round, as I understand it, because a reenacting weapon doesn't have a round in it, and so the sound isn't compressed when the, when the, the, the um, um, bullet comes out of the, the weapon. That's my understanding, so the sound would have been louder um, than if you saw a reenactment. But you can, if you've seen those reenacting videos, and they'll, they just go blah, 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 and down the line. That's what I imagine happening here. And it sounds like that's exactly what happened. So we're the British troops. We've got to the second line. We've now, we can't even see where we came from. And it's uh, quite a ways. It's time to push on and finish this business. And now you've drunk, the militia's running back, and you, there's smoke. So you got smoke everywhere. You got confusion. Officers are down. But you know what? Um, we're veterans. We probably clump up a little bit because our officers are down and the officers aren't there to say, Hey, spread, you know, get your distance. Um, maybe we clump up a little bit. Maybe we maintain complete discipline because we're just that good of troops and you're heading and you see in front of you, um, a line of about 300, probably this time up to 300, 700, 800 men. And behind those men are reforming militia that are getting ready to reform. And you think to yourself, we gotta get, we, now, now we're in it because we've thrown back the militia line, we've taken casualties, our officers are down, and we've got regulars in front of it. It's time to fix bayonets and give them the bayonet. Now in Revolutionary War terms, when the British forces give you the bayonet and they make a bayonet charge, you're gonna you're gonna be in big trouble because they're the masters of the bayonet, and you're not. <laughs> Especially the American militia, they don't even have bayonets, so they're gonna be they're gonna be at a distinct disadvantage. But those 300 regulars from Maryland, those Continental troops, those guys under Howard, they were trained by von Steuben. They can use the bayonet too. But it's not really like the Continentals to do that. There are only a couple battles where the Continentals really engage in using the bayonet. This is one of them. Um, I think the other one's Monmouth, but I'm not 100% sure. You might want to check up on that if you're interested in that. Um, but this is where the Continentals are going to give the bayonet. Now, the British forces are advancing on this third line that they can see in front of them. And that marker there is where the third line, the middle of that third line is. Okay, And they see, they see that third line and they're like, hey, let's hit them. We got them. And they get to about here, and suddenly um, the 71st Highlanders, um, they get orders to flank that force in front of me. Because remember, those regulars, there's only 300 of them, and the militia is just starting to form in on their side. So the Highlanders come up. The Highlanders are going to come up and flank that force. And what happens is Colonel Howard um, of the militia tells his troops to refuse the right flank so that they create a hinge over there so that they can, um, and the, the Highlanders are probably um, marching up to our left over there. And Howard tells his men over here to refuse the flank. So when the Highlanders hit them on that flank, they can protect the rest of the Continental Line. And what ends up happening is that order gets misinterpreted. Instead of refusing the flank, those troops um, basically um, turn and start to march to the rear. And when that happens, the rest of the regulars see that and also start to turn and withdraw to the rear. The British now, and I'm marching forward through this smoke here, maybe we fired a volley, um, but there's smoke laying on the field. And I see those Highlanders coming up, giving the Highland charge and the Highland yell. And I see the, the Continentals withdrawing. And my mind is telling me, these guys don't want any part of us, they're leaving the field. And we don't have many officers left, and we've taken some casualties here, but it's now our time. They're gonna get what we, they're gonna get our best shot now. We're gonna give them the bayonet. And as they see them withdrawing, the British are going to fix bayonets and they're gonna start moving in, moving in for the kill. Now we're moving in for the kill. On our left, the Highlanders are coming up into the Continentals. The Continentals are still walking to the rear. What we don't know is Daniel Morgan is right now talking to Howard and he's telling Howard, what are you doing? And Howard's saying, uh, Sir, I'm just redeploying my men. 
and how and, and we're getting up and we can actually see those blue coats we're getting close bayonets out and suddenly there's an order given with the with the continentals and they turn around and we're 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 really close now because we're hitting the third line here and they turn around right about here and every single one of those 300 400 men that's there they turn around and they shoot a volley at point blank right into our ranks this was a volley that goes all the way down this line and to my left I can see the Highlanders falling and I'm probably hit and probably everybody in my direct left and right since we're in the front rank gets hit and we're either wounded or hurt those of us that aren't hurt now can either continue to charge or not charge but what we also see coming down this road here um, and coming down our flank over here as um, is cavalry because here comes Colonel Washington's cavalry and over there where the Highlanders are we can see tons of militia coming in on his flank and suddenly we're now caught in an unintentional double envelopment I've got militia to my right maybe I'm wounded maybe I'm not but they're starting to shoot at me they're they're blazing away at us and over here the Highlanders I look and I start to see them to surrender start to surrender and some of the Continentals are coming at them with bayonets and they're stabbing people and they're screaming and there's smoke everywhere and um, suddenly everything falls apart everything falls apart because um, we've lost unit cohesion uh, many of us are down we're clumping up our officers are down and our elite force is has just taken a devastating volley and is surrendering it's time to call it a day and we're gonna surrender and we're gonna hope that those Continental troops don't give us Tarleton's quarter that they take us prisoner and that's what happens they get taken many at least 500 get taken prisoner and so um, Tarleton he sees this happening and he realizes I've got to go get the I've got to go get the Legion. I've got to go get that 200 Legion Cavalry. That last little card I've got to play. He gets on his horse. He rides back. And he goes to get the, the Legion Cavalry. Meanwhile, we've all surrendered, those of us that are able. And the Continental Infantry now is surging forward. And the Continental Infantry is going to surge forward. And they're going to race for that. Um, they're going to race for those Grasshopper guns. They're going to um, take out the crews of those guns. And um, a captain from the Maryland militia is going to race the Delaware militia to the guns. And he's going to use his spontoon to pull vault onto the gun to claim it for the honor of the Maryland militia. Meanwhile, Washington and his cavalry is going to pursue Tarleton. Tarleton's going to get back to the Legion cavalry and say, men, we've got to, you've got to engage. And the Legion cavalry is going to see what's going on down here. And they're going to say, mm, ah, the jig's up. We're out of here. Plus, there's already militia on the flanks. They've already, militia's already filtered back to the flanks of the Legion Cavalry, way down there, and they're plank, plinking at them already. They don't want any part of this. They know what the jig's up. They're out of here. So the 200 Legion Cavalry are intact and get away intact. Tarleton gets in a little brief skirmish with uh, Washington, supposedly wounds his uh, horse and skims his leg, and gets hit in the hand with a saber. Um, another British officer is supposedly killed by Washington's servant, who saves Washington by shooting the man, and thus ends the Battle of Calpens. Tarleton rides 16 miles away, and he gets chased by Washington the whole way. A thousand British troops off the table. And um, the effect of that on the historical situation is Cornwallis just lost about 20% of his force, at least 25% off the table. His situation, his calculus has now changed. He's got troops coming up under Leslie that are reinforcing him. And um, this is going to eventually lead Cornwallis to head north. The Battle of Guilford Courthouse, where the, he wins the battle but loses in a Pyrrhic, loses the tr strategic battle because he loses so many men he's got to head to Yorktown. And we all know what happens after that. So that's the Battle of Cowpens. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time on the battlefield.